Today we are going to make a fire in a wood stove and I'm going to make this video because I noticed that some people have problems making a fire properly and quickly. Now we have a freestanding wood stove here and this heats our house. We have no other heat in our house except for this wood stove. And because our house is only, you know, about a thousand square feet, it's great. It blows us out. Like I can walk around in my underwear once I get this thing going. That will not be in the video. If you're burning for your main source of heat, you really have to be organized. It can't just be a couple sticks of wood here and there. And I'll show you my setup. This is where I stack big pieces of wood. And you know, it looks a little dirty. There's bark and you know, sometimes a couple bugs get in, but that's just the reality. You see here, we actually have a wood door so I can feed wood from the outside and stack two days of wood right there and then just pull it in right here. Then on the other side here, I have a trash can. You could get a nice box, but I just get a trash can. And in this, I keep kindling. Every couple days, I'm going outside, picking up sticks, pieces of bark. And then I have a bucket here where I put in junk mail, you know, boxes that things came in because I need the paper to start a fire. And then I have a little uh, basket here, which I have uh, matches and fire starters. And, you know, I have a pair of gloves. Then I have my tools here. I got a poker. You got to have the poker. Uh, I've got a, a brush because I'm having to clean this out every single day. So I need a brush to actually get all the ashes down. And then I have a little small hatchet here because sometimes the kindling that I have, I have to actually kind of chop up a little bit to make them pieces smaller. The way I start is I just get one big piece of wood and this is like the foundational piece of wood and I just stick it in there. And basically what I'm doing is I'm building a lean-to. Those of you who are Boy Scouts, this is like, it's 101 Boy Scout stuff. I just take a lot of paper and like I said, this is great for all that junk mail that might come to you. And it's really important not just to stick this in there. You actually have to open things up and crumple it because you're trying to give as much uh, a surface area as possible. If things are just flat on each other, they aren't going to burn. You can't put in too much paper. You know, there's a big pile of paper there. Once I put wood on there, it'll smush down, but you have to have that fire to really get it going. What we're doing is we're building layers. So we have the paper. Now we have little tiny sticks. If you try to go from paper, just a big piece of wood, like a logs, that fire is never gonna start. How, if you wanna think about the fire is, if you're doing a gradual building of a layer. So uh, uh, once the fire starts at the, its bottom, it lights each a uh, layer, and then it all kind of goes together. And then I have some bigger pieces of wood. This is just old uh, flooring that we put down. These were the extra scraps, just pine flooring that I've kind of uh, cut up. It's with the hatchet. Now I'm bringing some logs over, but these aren't big logs. These are kind of like, it's medium sized logs. So every stove is gonna be different, but they all have basically the same kind of things. We have a side door and we have a front door, but I just like to use the side door. This is where the ashes fall into, extremely handy. So I just have to put the ashes in here and then take it out and throw it away. But what this door also does is I keep it open when I start the fire because if you want as much air coming in as possible. There's also another air intake where you can open up the air from here up top or close it down. And I always keep that wide open when I'm starting the fire. I have these fancy big, it's matches, but it's, you can just have any kind of match really or lighter. And I just have to light a couple pieces of these paper. There's plenty of air and room in there and this paper is going to go. All right, it started. So we got a good fire going right there. It's already hot, but that's really not the kind of fire that's going to heat you. What you're trying to get are coals. So now is when you're trying to really feed the fire so you get a whole a layer of 
deep red coals. And that's what makes the stove really hot and that's what radiates the heat. So now I'm putting in larger pieces of wood. This is a temperature gauge that you can buy at any hardware store. And uh, most stoves will have a hole that you can stick it in and it tells you how hot the uh, fire is. The goal is that you have to keep it at a certain uh, temperature so the fire is hot enough where it's burning off all the uh, wood because what you don't want is to go outside and see soot and smoke coming out of the uh, fireplace. It should look like it's nothing, just pure heat. If you're going to heat your house only it's with wood is it's a commitment so we've actually built two wood sheds here that we try and keep filled one shed is for next year so that wood is in there it's dry seasoning and this shed is for this year and as you see it's towards the end of the a year this whole building was full of wood and now we just have this here and i also keep other trash cans of sticks this is a bunch of that old flooring that I kept that I it use. You know, it's always about, you gotta be scavenging. You gotta be thinking ahead. I showed you that little door. Here's the outdoor. So we actually strategically built our wood sheds right near our wood door. So on really cold, snowy days, this is perfect. I don't have to walk on the other side of the yard. It's all right here. And actually when we bought the house, this door was a real selling point for us because we imagined that that was really important for us to keep our bills low, to heat our house. It's with wood and this was a real big deal because I don't see this in very many houses. And a lot of this wood we get, I don't really, go out into the uh, forest and cut a lot of wood. A lot of this just comes from people cut down trees in their yard and then they'll post on Craigslist that they're trying to get rid of already cut wood. And I just have to go and pick it up in uh, our truck. And I do that throughout the a year and just make a big pile of it and then just split it. I rarely ever have to actually find a tree to cut down and chop up. So in 10 minutes from when we started the fire, this stove is now at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a great temperature. I put in a couple more pieces of wood, but as you can see here, it is almost all coals. But at this point, I can now put as big a pieces of wood I want in there because it's so hot, it doesn't matter what size. I can also now close up the bottom vent because it doesn't need as much air anymore. What I really want to do is crank the air down so the coal stay hot and doesn't burn itself out too fast because I want that temperature to be hovering at like 1200 degrees or so. So that's how you start a fire and deal. It's with a wood stove to heat your home. Our heating bill every month is zero dollars. Uh, all it really takes is time and I'm just gathering scavenging stuff throughout the year and when the summertime comes I clean all this up I put everything back in the a wood shed and it looks a lot uh, nicer then so that's it hope you enjoyed it